Hi everyone, today I've got a Gateway Tesla T2 on my table uh, for tuning purposes and uh, today we're gonna uh, do the uh, tire replacement. We will replace uh, 16 by 2.125 uh, inch tire to the uh, 16 by 2.5 inch tire to make the riding of this Tesla much more comfortable for the rider. Uh, the problem is that you can just buy the new tire, uh, which is uh, 16 by 2.5 and install it here, because in stock version of this wheel it uh, just won't fit into the inner shell. And what do we have to do uh, to tackle with that is to uh, lift this wheel. Um, I will use these uh, custom pedal hangers from uh, EUCU brand. Uh, here is the 10 number, it says that uh, it uh, does 10 millimeters lift. Also, I will install this capacitor, uh, which is also from EUCU brand. You see, it's already prepared for the installation. It has necessary connectors uh, to make its installation much easier without any soldering process. And of course, I will do some uh, minor things like uh, Schottky diode installation into the charging circuit of this uh, wheel. Of course, I will uh, leave Instagram link uh, for the EUCU brand in the description of this video. Uh, feel free to uh, follow this link and check out what do they have, uh, because they do not have only uh, just the pedal hangers and capacitors, but uh, they have uh, the complete uh, tuning sets for all Bigotti or Gutway wheels, such as custom pedals, uh, custom shields uh, for covering and protection your wheel and other custom details so you can buy the full uh, kit uh, just from one uh, brand to make your wheel unique and of course it will be of premium quality so uh, feel free to follow the link and uh, check out what uh, do the guys have for you and your wheel so that's the plan for today now i'm going to disassemble this wheel i won't uh, shoot this process because uh, everybody knows uh, and uh, there are a lot of videos in the internet how to disassemble Tesla T2. Um, then I will uh, do the tire change and after that when I will start to um, check how to fit uh, the new tire and uh, the new pedal hangers to the inner shell, I will shoot uh, the video where I will explain all the details of the process, where do you have to cut it um to to make it uh, working normally and to fit it without like any interference of the uh, tire and the inner shell so with the help of video editing i'm moving you guys uh, into the future uh, for me it was quite significant time to disassemble this uh, tesla for you it's just a second and before we continue working on this uh, tesla to uh, cut uh, this uh, inner shell I would like to give you some of comments uh, regarding the serviceability of this Tesla. If you remember on T3 version I told uh, that it is quite hard to service because you have to remove the batteries to uh, unscrew the uh, pedal hangers and to remove them. Uh, so here is quite the same story. Um, you have to remove the controller. Uh, although you have these wires uh, with the connectors here and you can just pull it away from there but you still have whole sensor connector which is here and it is uh, impossible to get there to disconnect it uh, uh, especially when it is covered with the uh, sealant here so anyway this uh, Tesla uh, requires uh, battery removal uh, then you have to remove the controller and only after this uh, you can uh, disconnect the whole sensor, you can disconnect the uh, power cables and uh, remove your motor. Uh, for example, for uh, tire maintenance purposes or whatever you need to. So in terms of serviceability, uh, this uh, T2 model is uh, pretty much uh, the same like T3 model, but uh, the main difference is that uh, T3 model uh, has uh, a little uh, more space here it is much more comfortable to work with in in this case so that's about it uh, let's let's continue with the cutting of the inner shell so now you can clearly see what the first problem is when you lift in the tesla t2 uh, so here is the nut uh, which doesn't come into this uh, hole 
So I'm gonna cut uh, this hole a little bit more here like this uh, to let this nut come through. Uh, by the way, I have aligned all these um, uh, fastening holes for bolts uh, with the uh, new pedal hanger. So, and this shows us uh, how much do I have to cut here uh, before uh, putting the inner shell uh, to its place. So now I'm going to cut this part. And after I will align the inner shell with the new pedal hanger, I will uh, proceed with uh, cutting of the in a shell for better tire alignment. This is an Apex Rise production. So here is the result of my work. Uh, the uh, inner shell is aligned very well with these uh, holes uh, in the um, pedal hangers. So it's not really tightly here uh, aligned with this nut. Uh, it has like uh, a half of millimeter here. Not to make any uh, extra um, pressure here to this uh, part of this inner shell because everybody knows that uh, uh, this part of the inner shell uh, always suffer from uh, cracks and you see here it's already reinforced. Uh, of course, uh, one may say that I could uh, uh, cut here much more uh, to be able to work with the uh, wrench uh, here in future, but I don't think it's a good idea uh, because uh, I've already removed some part of the plastic here and uh, this is not so um, reliable uh, part of the inner shell. So uh, in my opinion, it's much better to tighten those nuts outside of the inner shell and then uh, to put uh, it inside. Because uh, if you try to tighten it here, uh, this uh, part of the uh, inner shell may crack. Um, so I try to uh, save as much plastic here as possible not to make uh, uh, this part of the inner shell to be much more weaker than uh, the standard one. The next problem one have to tackle uh, who wants to lift uh, the wheel like this is that uh, you have uh, to cut these parts of the wheel well here and here and on the other uh, side of the inner shell because the tire won't fit here. Uh, so the new pedal hangers uh, move a little bit uh, the uh, wheel here but here we still have problems. So how am I going to cut this? So I've already made uh, this kind of template uh, from the cardboard. I put like this, cut it here, and then I uh, just moved it uh, three centimeters up and made a markup for me. I hope you can see that. So here are scratches of markup and I will cut it like this. So cut this piece and then uh, check if my uh, wheel fits to the wheel well. Uh, of course one may say that it is not necessary to take care of this geometry uh, since it has uh, a glossy cover here and of course if I did it just for me I wouldn't take care of this. But since this is not my wheel I will do it much like stock uh, for the better owner's satisfaction. So let's go ahead and cut this part and check if uh, the tire fits perfectly.
So as you have seen in the video, I had to cut uh, four uh, pedal hanger screws uh, because uh, here in the custom pedal hangers, right under these screw holes, uh, the axle shim is uh, located. So it blocks the screw uh, from being screwed in uh, for the whole length. Uh, and that's why you have to cut it or buy like uh, uh, a shorter ones. Uh, but I am really lazy guy and I didn't want to go to the shop uh, for buying extra screws So I decided to cut the stock ones. That's how the inner shell wheel well was cut uh, Looks like the stock one pretty much accurate So now you can see the photos how uh, the new tire fits into the wheel well after cutting The space between the wheel well and the tire is pretty much like stock I think this is uh, the best acceptable uh, lift possibility for this Tesla uh, T2 and uh, the best tire for uh, T2 uh, replacement. So if you have to install a bigger tire than this one, you will have to cut uh, more of the inner shell and you will have to sacrifice these uh, wooden screws here and here. And I think this is not a, a really good idea because uh, the, the, the whole uh, assembly is done by the wooden screws and this is uh, really not good from stock and if you like remove two more uh, the rigidity of uh, this inner shell will suffer so that's the way how I've cut the uh, glossy covers this one is cut and this one is stock uh, again I did the same as with the inner shell I've made a template uh, like uh, moved it a little bit here, made a markup and then cut it. Uh, I've moved uh, like two and a half centimeters uh, uh, upper to remove uh, excess of the plastic to let the tire not to touch this uh, glossy cover. So I'm really satisfied with the result. Maybe just uh, cut a little bit here to make it uh, look uh, way better. So now I'm going to cut this one and I will continue with uh, assembly of the wheel. One of the subscribers asked me in the comments to explain uh, how to install and what are the main purposes of installation of the Schottky diode. So now I'm answering this question. This is a Schottky diode. I will leave uh, the link uh, to this Schottky diode in the description of this video so you can uh, read about it and check the data sheets. So datasheet says that it is uh, compatible with 100 volts and 15 amps of current. Um, uh, it has three contacts here. Uh, those are the anodes, which are on the sides. And in the middle is the cathode. Uh, the idea is that uh, the current can flow only from anode to cathode and not vice versa. Uh, this is the main uh, reason why I install it into the a charging circuit. See here I've already cut the charging wire and uh, solder it somewhere here. Um, so by this uh, I'm getting rid of uh, the uh, unnecessary big voltage on the charging port which may cause problems uh, on this port if you will short circuit it or the water will go in or something else. So I'm pretty sure that uh, holding 84 volts here always available is not a uh, uh, safe uh, feature of this wheel. Uh, that's why I installed these diodes. Uh, so here is the other one which is prepared for installation. You see I've uh, united the anodes of this diode. The reason I do this uh, because this is the assembly of diodes uh, and if uh, you look into the data sheet you can find um, 15 amps current and if you connect just one anode you should divide it by two. So like it will be 7.5 and to get all the um, available power of this diode uh, we must unite these nodes to work properly under its datasheet's um, specifications. Uh, so 
by the way, I must say that in RS I didn't unite the anodes. I just forgot about this and uh, it works really perfectly. Uh, I'm charging it with 8 amps charger and so no, no problem still for that. But anyway, you shouldn't do like me. You should do like this uh, to make it more safer. Yeah. Because the more current is flowing from just a part of the assembly, the more heat it will dissipate and it is possible uh, for this uh, element to get damaged. So now I am going to solder it here and continue with the wheel assembly. Finally, the wheel is assembled. You can hear there are absolutely no problems with the uh, tire. It does not uh, scratch anywhere in the wheel well or somewhere else. Everything is working fine. That's about it for today. Uh, that was the uh, tuning of Tesla T2 with the uh, coolest uh, parts from EUCU brand. If you like this tuning, uh, please uh, like this video, uh, also subscribe for the channel. Um, I've already planned and I hope that everything will go well and I will get the Tesla T3 for the same procedure and I will of course uh, shoot the video for you uh, of this procedure, how to do that for the T3 model because it's uh, different from T2 version. Uh, so if you like content uh, like that, uh, subscribe for the channel and check the uh, channel updates. See you later, guys.